Hey, everyone, and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. Well, you're going to learn today that you don't know beans, or at least as good as you think, because my guest is Steve Chili Smith from a wonderful company called Chili Smith. I had a guest on a little while ago named Twyla, who did a cooking demo using one of his products, and people wanted to know more about them. So we're going to talk about them. And he's generously given you guys, if you'd like to try them, a 10% discount with the code Chef AJ10. But what's really cool about the beans is, well, it's not just beans. He makes these mixes. So they're called iPot Ready. So all you really got to do is put them in your Instant Pot with water. The seasonings are there. It's all all measured out. It's pretty cool. So let me show you some of them. We have one that's called Hop and John, and these are all I pot ready. You know how I love Instant Pot. Round the Mountain. I love the names of these. Mountain Bean Chili. These are very beautiful beans. These Christmas Lima Beans. So this is a soup. And again, it has the seasonings. Really, all you have to do is add water and push a button. I think everybody can do that, even my husband. Tres Hermanas soup is the one that Twyla made on the show. And then lentils. This one has lentils and rice. That's pretty cool because together, grains and beans together are fantastic. And so you don't have to even measure the seasoning. It's all done for you. These are also beautiful beans. These snow cap beans. And I'm sure there's a lot more beans that... I've never heard of, you've never heard of, but we're going to have a bean lesson today, basics and beyond. Please welcome the proprietor, the CEO, the chief bean guy, Steve Smith. It's very nice to meet you. Thanks very much for having me. This is wonderful. Yeah. So how do you, how'd you get to be so interested in beans? Well, you know, the, the truth of the matter is, is that I had a, like a lot of folks, I had a career that was, uh, my, my family had restaurants and we grew up in the restaurant business. And so in those days, everybody was involved in the business. And late, I left and had my own career with hotels and all the rest, but people would occasionally run into me and ask me about the chili that my parents had in their restaurants, which was memorable and delicious. Well, after my dad had gone and my stepmother had passed, my my family was cleaning out the house and here in the back of a closet, we found the original recipe book from one of the restaurants. And so we were able to make some of that chili. And we of course shared it with some people and they loved it. And so we kept doing it. Well, as a result of that, we met the people at the Moore Fry Ranch and they're the people who originally started growing all of the heirloom beans here in Northern California. And so they, they asked if I would be interested in helping market their product, knowing that that is what I had done. And I said, okay, well, we developed our own brand, our Chili Smith brand. We began to bring in about 26 different varieties of heirloom beans. Those heirloom beans are all natural beans. And I want to take just a minute to explain why there's a difference between heirloom beans and commercially grown beans. Now, commercially grown beans are a wonderful thing and you're not gonna get me to say anything bad about them, but they're designed so that they can grow in just about any environment. They're processed in a way where they're dried, they're cleaned to some degree, and then they're put in a place where they can be stored for 25 years and still be eaten. I always tease the commercial guys when I'm with them to say, yeah, and your product will be just as flavorless then as it is now, you know. What I love about heirlooms is that they have a story and they have flavor. And oftentimes in our cooking, that's really what we've lost with all of the convenience that we've done, we've lost that. And I admire and love the convenience. Now, like a lot of folks, I learned to cook beans in that restaurant and restaurants that I was describing. And I was one of the kids that would stand on a, on a stool and stir a, a big pot of, with beans in it that would get ready for the chili or the soups that my folks would make. Well, I did that and water bath cooking is what that's called. And I did that and I, I, I was most comfortable with it. And I was scared to death of using a pressure cooker for as a lot of folks are because my grandmother had once said 
hey, go over and check on those artichokes, you know, and she had an old pressure cooker about like this one that's behind me, and it was rattling and snarling and spitting, and I just wouldn't get near it. I was just I was petrified of it. So I took that off my list, you know. Now, we used commercial grown beans in the restaurants because dad knew about heirlooms, I'm sure, because he was a real wise man, but he had never used them that way. And that's because they weren't really being grown the way that we do now to where we have enough of them to be grown in and used commercially. So when we kind of go full circle and we come back to cooking beans, yes, water bath works, but the rub on beans has always been, hey, It'd be great to have some beans tonight, but I forgot to put them on soak. And years go by and instant pot comes along or modern electric pressure cookers, which just take that rub completely away. We add the beans, we add the water, we push it, we put on a lid and we push a button and in less than an hour we're eating fresh, wonderful, flavorful beans. Now, we grow with different growers now because our business has expanded. And so now we have different family growers. Every grower that represents Chili Smith product grows, is a family operation. Now that's not because I'm against corporate because I grew up corporate. It's that decisions need to be made on product that is there. And I find that family farms are better at that. Everything that we have in our Chili Smith store and in our product line is grown and produced in Northern California. The only exception is our lentils. We do not grow lentils in California. And so I import, I import them from Montana. In fact, I'm gonna be leaving for there tomorrow morning. Great time of year to go to, up to Montana. And part of what we're doing up there will be, I'll get to visit with a few of our growers there as well. We bring those lentils down and we do what we do with them as well. Now, Chili Smith has developed into a company that meets cooks where they are. We started putting on cooking classes and tasting parties when we first had a store. And we didn't have a store for the first eight years that we had beans. We have sold beans all over the country and still do and ship them every day. We just had the postal fella come in here now and picked up 10 or 11 packages of beans that were going out today. So I met some people along the way that are excellent cooks. Some of them were chefs from some of the hotels where I served. They helped me with learning more about cooking products than what I knew when I worked for mother and dad. And so we've just continued on. Now I have people like Twyla, who you've met, who represents for us, she's our, our whole food plant-based guru. And, and is an excellent cook. And she brings those things together. But we also work with people in other cultures in other food tastes to bring forth their product. I'm kind of a chuck wagon guy. I like everybody and I like them to use our products. And so if they want to represent them with plant-based, I'm fine with that because I love that. If, they, if I got somebody that's in the family that wants to have a little meat with theirs, I'm not going to lecture them. I'm just gonna let them do what they need to do and then we're gonna do. So that's what we've done. Here's the thing, heirloom beans are all natural. The beans that we see in a grocery store today might be six, eight, maybe as many as 10 varieties of beans, right? We'll have a like a navy bean and we'll have a a, a blonde garbanzo bean and a few beans like that, maybe a kidney bean, but we won't have 26 with these super, super names like Good Mother Stoller, right? Some of the beans that I brought up for us to look at today would be like Eye of the Goat. Now, I love the history of these beans. To be an heirloom bean means that it has been unchanged for over for 50 years. Now, an heirloom means that it's going to be grown naturally in the fields. It's not going to be sprayed. It's not going to be uh, changed in any way whatsoever. So what happens is 
with the commercially grown beans that we buy in our grocery store and use, <coughs> excuse me, they have wonderful characteristics. Yes, they have protein. Yes, they have a lot of things, but they're missing the most important ingredient and that's flavor. In my mind, flavor is number one. Every, everybody should have a healthy diet and that's what we try to teach. But trying to get people on a healthy diet if the food isn't delicious, does not work. Twyla knows that, I know that, Chef AJ knows that, everybody knows that. So that's what we try to do, is everything that we have is to try to make it delicious. Now, at Chili Smith, again, what we try to do is to meet cooks where they are in their comfort and skill level. Some of them are very skillful, more skillful than I am, and they just need a package of beans and they're gonna do their own, their own seasoning, their own vegetables, their own meats, their most whatever. We also in our store have a section with frozen product in it. We've got the, the original chili that my parents made has been updated and modernized and of course has heirloom bean in it now, but it, and it is just as good as it was in the 1960s and 70s. We have a, a, um, a lean and mean black bean chili that we make that is very popular. And then we've got a couple of items that are what we call Twyla approved. There's no oil, no salt, no sea. They're just, they're just the beans and what we do. And we've got those in a black bean soup with vegetables. And then we also have one that's an award winning uh, chili that we were featured on the Food Network with called so good healthy veggie chili, which features 11 vegetables and four of our heirloom beans in a wonderful chili seasoning. And that's, that's really healthy and really good. And it helps people move that those are considering moving away from processed foods, moving away from meats and go more into that. So there are, as I say, currently about 26 varieties of heirloom beans that you'll find on our website and we welcome you to go look at those. We do have finished foods that are completely cooked and frozen in our freezers and you just take them home, thaw them, reheat them and eat them. They're just wonderful. We also have developed, particularly during the pandemic, as Chef AJ had, had pointed out, our iPod ready line. Now, the reason that we did this is because there's so much interest in our beans and in our foods and creating good things and making it easy. But a lot of folks don't want to do all of that cooking and soaking and all the rest. So we designed these packages to where they can just go into the instant pot or the electric pressure cooker. The water can be added. You give it a quick stir and it's ready to go. And we're gonna show you exactly how we do that here. And then we're gonna show you exactly what the product looks like when we finish. Now, people often will say to me, why, what makes the heirlooms and chili smith so special? Well, here's the thing. So part of it is of the bean business is economics. A bean is, is priced at less $2 or $3 in a grocery store in a one pound soft pack bag like this. And when you get it home and you go to look at it, the very first thing that people will teach you is, hey, put them on your kitchen counter or put them on a sheet tray and pick through them and make sure there's no rocks in there. Or no, and then maybe discard the ones that don't look so good. Maybe discard the, the splits. Splits are when beans separate. When you look at chili smith beans, what you're gonna find is that there are very few splits. There better not be any stones and no sand. And the reason for that is because we go through a process where the beans are cleaned, sorted, separated, and then polished. Then what that does is it leaves us with an ultra clean product. It's important of course, that it be delicious, but it doesn't matter how good something tastes. If you break a tooth on a little stone in there, you're not gonna to be too happy with this. So that's really what we do now. Uh, do we have some that are gorgeous? Yes. Do we have some that have interesting names? Indeed, yes. Do we have some that are that fit with all kinds of different culture and some of those things? Absolutely, we do. Now, this, 
this process, this education that I'm trying to work through here is generally in a, in a class that's about two hours that we call B times three. That's for beans, basics, and beyond. And so forgive me as I kind of ramble forward quickly and go through things. The next question that I'm generally asked is, well, how, wait, if you're soaking beans, how do you know that they're soaked? Because I've cooked beans before and I've soaked them and then I boiled them and I've done it and they're still hard and they're good. Number one, start with a good quality bean that's fresh. Our beans are not designed for being in 25 years of storage. Our beans are seeds. They still have the moisture in them. They've never been in a dryer. And if we don't sell them in three years, we use them back in the field as seed to grow more. So you take those beans that we have here, the beans that we have will be clean. They're going to be shiny. They're going to be absolutely gorgeous to look at. If they make any food, we eat with our eyes, so they make any food look much better. When you get into the soaking process, and there is absolutely nothing wrong, uh, and I happen to be a fan of water bath cooking because I did it as a youth, <coughs> you put the beans in, and I put three different ones in here. These are three different sizes of beans. <coughs> Excuse me. And I put them in, oh, a couple hours before uh, AJ and I were going to be together. And I, I have here some Lena Cisco bird egg that is a Beautiful bean that actually resembles a bird egg. We've got some Christmas lima, which we had mentioned before, which is a large, flattish bean with gorgeous uh, maroon and white striping that is has a bit of a flavor like a chestnut, including the lima flavor. And then these beans are called Hutterite or Hutterite soup, which were actually brought from Germany with the Hutterite people toward um, Montana. Uh, and uh, southern part of Canada uh, several years ago. Now, these, we don't have a close-up that we can show, but what, what you're able to see is that the beans still have wrinkles. Now, that's important to know for this reason, and here's how you remember if your beans have soaked enough. They, not all beans are going to soak at the same speed, number one. So, that thing we've always had with, hey, soak them overnight, they'll be good to go, may or may not work. The reason I like to look at the skins is because beans are just the opposite of us. When we are in a bathtub too long, we get wrinkly. When they're in the water and they still have wrinkles, they need a little more time to soak. And the reason the wrinkles are there is because the skins, the outer skin of the bean has expanded more quickly than the water goes into the flesh inside. We want to get as much water inside the bean as we can to prepare the most delicate and wonderful taste. So that's what we're looking for. If we're pre-soaking beans, is to put them in there. You'll see in these, these are Chili Smith beans. There are no splits, no stones, no dirty water, no nothing. They're just great. So there's nothing wrong with getting your beans like this in commercial. You will not hear that from me. Be careful about what happens with them because you want a good, clean product that you're going to be serving your family and your friends. Now, the next thing we're going to look at is, well, what are we doing with these beans when we're going to put them into a pressure cooker? And it's, it is just as simple as can be. And to demonstrate it, I'm going to roll an instant pot over here and try to get it in view. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take one of our iPod line items and put it in here. And this is how simple it is. You open the package. Every Chili Smith package has a, a reclosable, resealable clear bag. We do that so number one, you can see our product and see the quality of our product. And number two, in our <coughs> straight bean line, we want to reseal it. So we're going to enter this. We're just going to dump them into the pressure cooker. With iPod, you're going to have a package like this. And this package has the dehydrated vegetables in it. It's got the seasoning in it. 
everything that is necessary to create the product, in this case, it's the soup, will be there. So we're gonna open that. We're gonna place that in here, dump it. Now there's even a broth in here that's a vegetable broth, which is a, an expensive product to use. We order it from RC Fine Foods in uh, New Jersey, of all places, and it's wonderful. It's low uh, sodium and very, very good. We also make the, oh, now we're gonna add the moisture. And we're gonna add two, in this case, we're gonna add two quarts of product. We're gonna give it a quick stir. We're gonna put on the lid. I can get it backwards here. I don't know if I can do it. And then we're gonna we're gonna plug it in and we're gonna cook it for 40 minutes. After the 40 minutes, what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at it again and, and see if we and see if it might need a little more cooking. Every instant pot works different. The other thing I want to tell you about with this instant pot line is we now are offering it in a salt-free thing. Um, way of doing so there is no salt whatsoever in our seasoning when we do this we always we always try to look at things with our heat and level and with our salt level is really kind of the middle of the road we always want it so that my mother used to say or, or dad i think dad probably said it best he said what you want to do is you want to spice your your chili so that folks know they've had a party for their mouth but you don't want it to stay and do the dance all night and so we've always stayed with that philosophy of having low heat. You can always add more if you need more. We also feel that way with sodium and salt. Sodium and salt has been abused over the years. In fact, from the original recipe, we, we already reduced the salt half. Then we cut it out altogether because people can add it themselves. We do the same thing with the oils in some of our cooked products. So we have that available, and if you should ask for it, we're happy to do that. Now, this Instant Pot was plugged in, cooked for 40 minutes, and voila, we're finished. So we're gonna now come over here. Do you think you could start either putting on the paper or the website what the seasonings are? Because like I think about myself allergic to black pepper, it's hard for me to buy something without knowing what the spices are. Exactly. In fact, um, I'm glad you brought that up because what we did is we we realized that we needed to do that. Um, and, and you're one of the folks that helped us with that. And so now with each seasoning pack, it's exactly what's on there. And it's also going on our website of exactly what ingredients are in it, not just in the seasoning, but also in the broth granule. So the folks know, there, there was a woman uh, who's a customer of ours who is allergic to mushrooms. And a lot of the, a lot, I didn't know, a lot of the things have um, mushrooms in them. Yeah, I so she said, well, I need to know that. So we ended up working with a manufacturer. So we don't have all of our seasonings we make ourselves but our broth we do not. Okay, so now you're less than an hour and dinner is served. You look at these big, meaty, wonderful beans with the vegetables. You can add more vegetables if you like. For those of you that have a part of your family that wants meat, wants sausages, and you're trying to work through this, split it in half and add what they want. Give them what they need until they see the light. That's what we do, old minister talk. So the aroma that's in here is absolutely incredible. You can see that the mixture of beans in Tracer Manas, which is our tribute to the three sisters, is we have large beans in here, different colored beans in here, medium-sized beans in here, and small beans in here. Now, Three Sisters is, is and, I, and probably more people know this than I, than I realize, it's what the native people, when we, first, when we as Europeans first came to America, we needed to, to uh, grow things and we weren't doing very well. 
the native people taught us to grow our corn and our beans and our squash together because the, the corn will help the soil with its nitrogen level. And, and as the stalks grow taller, it provides a, a trellis, if you will, for the beans to grow on, for the pods to get closer to the sun. And the, the large, broad leaves of the squash plants down below block out sunlight so that it made it easier for them to have weed control and some other things. So Americans, have, we've gone a different route, we know, but that we love that story and we love the fact that we're getting collaboration and cooperation between three natural ingredients that do it. So we do the same thing with this and it's become one of the most popular uh, in our uh, Tracer Moms line. It's pretty good, huh? Yep. What's your number one beet seller of beans? Of uh, individual beans? Yeah, individual beans and your iPot ready soup mix. Well, with iPot, Tracer Monus is large. We have three, four different chilies that we have, and they're very, very popular. We have one that's called Base Camp, and it, it rivals uh, Tracer Monus in its, in its sales and popularity. Now we've got the, the iPod line is with some specialty items uh, like Hop and John, which you mentioned, Tracer Manus, which we just looked at. We have uh, Cajun uh, beans and rice, which is very, very popular in the store. And all three of those are very popular. Then we've got a, a chili bean mix of what we call a base camp. It's a, it's a multi-bean chili that people have asked us for. It's hard to do that because you want to, not all beans cook the same, and so we had to be careful in how we did that. We have line shaft chili, which is with our organic black turtle beans. And then which you pointed out, coming around the mountain, which is a white bean chili with perfuano and our baby lima butter bean, which is wonderful. Then we have a, a full line of about eight different soups that we make, has soup seasoning in it. And then also frijoles de la olla, which are just wonderful, deliciously seasoned hot beans. And sometimes you just want to have hot beans to the side, particularly as we come into warmer weather. Here in California, we seem to be there already. So that's what we do with those. Now, as far as, as beans that are just straight beans, of course, in our wholesale end of our business, uh, Runner Cannellini, Good Mother Stollard, some of those beans that are just, they've been popular for years and we send pallets of them when we have them, uh, to New York and Boston and, and several different places. But here in the store, when people come through, uh, I, I think, well, I know that, that the most popular bean that they go with is snowcap and Christmas lima. Christmas lima is just, it just is one of those beans that just people get a bite of it and they go, I never liked, and I'm one of them, I never liked lima beans. And Christmas limas are different. They don't fall apart like green limas do. They don't end up like goo by the fourth quarter of a game, even if it's a 49er game. They don't, you know, they're, they're just, these hold together, hold their shape, hold their skin intact, and yet retain a very soft, delicate flavor and, and texture to the bite. What I love about them is that we can, we have versatility. We can use them in salads. We can use them in a lot of things that, you know, you think of limas that may not want to work in that. So as a cook, as we learn these things, so how do we get more beans? How do we get more fiber? How do we get more flavor into, into what we're trying to accomplish? We, we want to have beans that provide us with a great deal of versatility. And that's one of them that does. So folks come in. The, the second most popular bean uh, in the store is our Profano bean. Now, Profano is a marvelous bean that originated in Peru, that's the name, and like all beans everywhere, people loved it, and they took it with them, and, they trans and they've used that bean in central and southern Mexico, what we call Mexico, it was in Mexico when the beans started growing there, and that's been wonderful. We use it in everything from soups to, to uh, refried beans. We have it in several of our different things. It holds its it's shaped intact, wonderful aquafaba. The broth that, that it has is just delicious. It's like tea. You can drink it and want more. 
and it crushes very nicely with just the pressure of your tongue. So the bite experience is just marvelous with that particular bean. That's a relatively new bean to us uh, here. It grows beautifully in our area. I'm really, and here, everything we have, we can't grow everything. We can't grow Anasazi because we're not a, we're not a high desert area. We, we can grow, but what we want to grow, we're going to grow very well. And that's one that we do. Did you have another question? Yeah, I, uh, Jimmy's saying, well, what about all the gas? <laughs> Any suggestions for all the gas people get from beans? Oh, I'm so glad you asked that question. Well, we go through, and it comes up in every class, and it's important. There's a lot of jokes around it. And there's a lot of things, but here's the thing. The beans, what, what's happening when you, when you have gas, and it can be very uncomfortable for some people, is that the natural sugars that leach out from the bean um, when we're digesting them will get to our lower intestines and that's what and that will create it and that's what creates the gas the two of those things together now the best thing the best thing of course is some folks like to use product by you know off the shelf products like Beano and put it on there if, it, if it's uncomfortable for them and I don't blame them or if they've got a date and the guy's in a Volkswagen you may you know so now the next thing you want to do is, I once was doing a class in Chico at the gallery there, at the galley there, and one of the people there what happened to be a Cajun chef and also a chemist. And I got acquainted with her and she said, here's what you do if you want to eliminate the gas, is you take your beans, put them in a pot with your water, bring it to a vigorous boil for two or three minutes. Then take the pot, uh, the bead, everything, and put it in your carry it over and put it in your sink. Add a tablespoon of baking soda. And and when, remember when we were kids and we were making the volcano thing, you would and the, the, the vinegar and the and you'll kind of get a reaction like that, and it'll last probably 30 seconds or so. That's why you're in the sink in case it's gonna overflow, which it doesn't normally. And you stir that a little bit. Then the next thing you're going to do is dump everything into a colander and drain those beans very well, and then rinse them well. Then put them back after you've washed your pot, put your pot, put them back into your pot, bring them with an inch or two of water over the top, and bring them back. Now, if you're going to an iPot, you go to the iPot at that time. Now, if you're doing a water bath, you're going to cook it probably about 40 minutes, and just as you're Check in the bean, you know, for the doneness, for the softness, and you can feel the edges beginning to, to soften. Add a quarter of a cup of white vinegar directly to your pot. And it, it provides the softest, most delicate bean. Her name was Deb, and, and she's gone now, and we just, we miss her because she gave us such wisdom using the chemistry as well as knowing how to be a great cook. And that's become very popular with the people that we teach how to do it. They, they do a lot of that. If you were in your iPod, you would just add, when you finish your cook, you would add the vinegar then, stir it, put the lid back on and just let it set. It will not change the flavor of your dish, but it will neutralize those gases mightily. Great. Have you ever heard of kombu or sea vegetables? I've heard that. Yes, yes, we have. Uh, one of our, um, we work with a, with a, a master gardener uh, who happens to also be Japanese here in, in our local area. And he, he uh, uh, loves that and, and gave us some, uh, some things about it. That's a, and it works very well. Nice. Yeah. That, yep. Yeah. So this is probably, I don't know, maybe... 25% or a third of, of what we do in our classes. We're, uh, we're doing more of our classes online. Um, and we've learned some of that from you, Chef AJ, as you know. Uh, Twyla's doing classes, I'm doing classes. And, 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 and it won't be long before we're gonna be able to be back in, in person. And of course, that's very popular. We have people that come for a weekend and, and do that kind of stuff with us here as well. So any questions that you might have about cooking beans or about storing beans or about growing beans, I'm not a grower, but I am a fair chuck wagon cook. 
and it would be Steve, my first name, Steve at chilysmith.com. If you have any trouble with your code with Chef AJ10, because we're offering you 10% off for anyone who is an AJ, a Chef AJ listener to come to us and do that. And if you get your order in between now and tonight, and the reason I say that is because I'm leaving for Montana in the morning, I'm offering you free shipping. So if your order comes in tonight, by the time that I'm ready to go, you get free shipping. You'll also get your 10% discount. That way you get an opportunity to try a few of our beans and see what you like. I always say, once you try them, you'll never go back to store-bought. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. So um, what do you eat beans at every meal? What's that? Do you eat beans at every meal, Steve? I don't. I do. I love. I love them, and I I eat enough beans around here doing tasting in our in our kitchen and that sort of thing. Uh, Twyla is a is a three times a day person. She she really is faithful with that. One of the things that we're doing is trying to learn and to prepare products that help us to get that bean fiber into our diet. The latest thing, and you'll hear more about this, is. Uh, bean pies. We made. We have made some bean pies, which we discovered. We did a. Uh, we've done a video segment on them and love them. Uh, we're going to teach people how to make them, and we're also going to make them in our own in our own way. They are so delicious. I mean, when you first hear about, there's a lot of people that know about bean pies, but a lot of folks don't. Bean pies taste like a pumpkin pie with no sugar, no, you know, they're just fabulous. So we'll look at that too. We do it with hummus. We do it with brownies. We do it with all kinds of different things. We, there are a, a lot of ways to get the fiber and the flavor and all of the goodness that beans bring to us into your diet. Nice. Do you have a favorite bean? Well, it's like asking me, you know, Dale and I have 14, 13, she said, grandchildren. And so trying to pick one of those beans is about like saying, who's your favorite, you know? Um, I think if you were to ask Dale, my bride of 47 years, she would say, good mother Stalin. And, and that's disappointing for us these days because we're getting some more in, but we've had trouble growing good mother Stalin. In our bean fields where our growers are, uh, the last two seasons, we've had a lot of issues with the wildfire smoke that we've had up north here and also the lack of water to irrigate. So Good Mother is one of the beans that, that we had in short supply. We found some that had grown some that are just lovely. And that's a great bean. You know, when, we, uh, when we have them in stock, uh, you'll, all, everybody will know because our newsletter will be filled with it. It's very, very popular bean. Wow. Hey, here's a question. I just saw it. Where did it go? Oh yeah. Do you recommend sprouting beans before cooking? A lot of folks do. I don't, I don't really, it isn't something that I am as familiar with that would probably be a better question for Twyla. There's a lot of people and, and some of our other instructors, there's a lot of people that really swear by that. And it has a lot of, I've, I've studied it enough to know that it's valid, that it's very good. I just don't do a lot of it in my practicality. Nice. And there's a question. Do beans have a shelf life? Beans? I think they do. I think they do. I think um, fresher is better. That's the reason which I, one of the things I didn't point out in this short thing is that in any of the Chili Smith beans, you're going to see some notification on the bottom as to when that crop was grown and we give it five years. We have to give it something. We know that they're going to be good for more than five years if they're stored properly. You want it, That's the reason that we go to the expense of putting them in a resealable container so that they don't. Because you take these other containers and what happens is you open it up and it falls all over the counter and you lose your beans. Store it in a, in a low light area like a pantry closet that's a good thing to do if you're going to store them for a long time. I always feel people, sometimes customers will come in and, or, or call me online or let me know and say, I want to order this, this, this. They want to order enormous amounts of product because they're interested in every bean. And then 
being a lousy salesman, I always tell them, hey, 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 let's cut back on that. Order enough so that we keep fresh beans going, right? And so for us, when we when we finish a harvest, which we're harvesting and cleaning and finishing beans, they, 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 the totes are in for cleaning, which is a whole different issue and are coming to us as they can at this time of year. And so we, when they're in, they're fresh. They were in the front, they, you know, they're just months old. And that's really a good fresh bean. Be careful when you go to a grocery store because they will be unmarked. And as I said in the beginning, commercially grown beans are not processed like we think of food processing, but they're the process of getting the bean into the bag and getting into the store and that 25 year shelf life, is you, we don't know when they were grown. So, and, and everyone has, had, I don't think we've had one class where someone hasn't said, yeah, my problem with beans is I can cook them and 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 cook them. And, cook them, and they're still like rocks. Well, that means that the bean is dead. It means that the, that the flesh is not gonna open up again for the water to get inside the cells of the flesh. Pressure, particularly with heirlooms, is better. Great. And question, is this product available U.S. only or can you ship to Canada? No, we ship Australia. internationally as well to countries where we can. There are some countries where because it's an agricultural product, it's, it's, it's either a, a no, we don't want it, or it's, it's very, very expensive because you've got to pay somebody in between to allow it to come in the country. But like the United Kingdom, we ship on a regular basis. Uh, Germany, we ship on a regular basis. There, um, there's several other countries that Australia, New Zealand, not so much. I mean, New Zealand's tough, but th that makes sense because they live on an island and they don't want something to come in that, that could even possibly endanger what they grow there. because They grow some fabulous products. And a lot of folks that will come to see us like a national uh, heirloom exposition come from New Zealand or they, they come from all over the world to, to see all kinds of things, including us. And and they go, I'd love to take them home, but I, if I put them in my suitcase, when I, you know, we'll get in trouble. So the answer is yes, we do ship. Everything we ship, about 99% of it is shipped United States Postal Service. We're trying to keep those folks going. And, and we ship it in uh, priority mail. So if you give us an order, the orders that went out today, will some will be delivered tomorrow. Some will be delivered Wednesday. That's how quickly it happens anywhere in the United States. Great. Thank you. Because people were asking, yeah, and they're excited about getting the nutritional information or at least the ingredients available. Yeah, the in nutrition, all of the nutrition are, is played, posted right on our labels. And we, we like that. We're doing it now for iPod. You know, part of, part of the information that you want to put on a, on a product is yeah, I still want people to see the product. I don't want it to all be paper with all of the all of the regulations, but I do think nutrition is kind of important. So we're doing that. And also some of the things as we learn as we go through this is the importance of having all of the ingredients uh, listed for spicing and dehydrated vegetables as to what's in that container. Great. And here's a fun question. What is the weirdest and most interesting use for beans you've ever heard of besides eating? Uh, eating? No, besides eating. Oh, besides eating. Well, you know, when, at, at Mandarin, at the Mountain Mandarin Festival, which is held in Auburn, which is in the Gold Rush area here, they, they do some things with young people, which I appreciate. And they used beans there, and they they did the same thing at National Heirloom Exposition one one year, where they used the beans for art. And so what we did was we provided them all these different beans, shapes, colors, whatever, and they made some of the most gorgeous things. Rather than you know painting like with watercolors or something, they put a little piece of, I guess, glue on on this thing, and and then uh, make art with all these beads as well as other products. And so I always thought that was kind of an interesting thing, you know. The other thing I think that, that comes to mind about that is one of the, one of the products that, we, uh, that is popular and that we, we uh, have in, in, integrated into the market over the years 
is our nature's power. It's a lupin bean powder or flour. And what, what it does, that, that bean, that one bean is very difficult to cook because the outer skin is very hard. And, and by the time you get that to soften, the flesh generally is there. So uh, somebody came up with a great idea to mill it. Now, a lot of beans are milled into a paste or a flour or whatever. And that one, it happens to be really high in protein, like 40% pure protein. And so that's used in smoothies and, and in roux for gluten intolerant folks. And, and also replaces some of the call for wheat flour or rice flour, any kind of flour. Uh, in baking and does a great job with that. And so when we're when we're working with that, people often kind of go, flour, really? And so that's a little weird, but it is it works so beautifully. You know, it's like when we have the grandkids with us and we're gonna cook some pancakes or some waffles, <clears throat> I use it in my cornbread as well, but I'll put a dollop or two in the mix. I just don't tell them it's good for them. And, and there's no flavor change, so it's very good. So that's kind of weird as well. Nice. Uh, and this question, are they organic and are they non-GMO and where are they grown? Well, yes, of course they're all non-GMO and all of our beans are grown here in Northern California. Um, I, our store is in, in, in business is in Carmichael or Sacramento and all of our beans are grown within about 60 miles of here uh, with family farms. And there was a second part to that. Oh, are they organic? Uh, yes, some of my growers will have them certified organic. Some do not. There's a there's another reason other than just the certification process in that that has to do with who can come on your farm and when they can and that kind of thing. But all of them are grown to be herbicide, pesticide free. So they're grown actually to a higher standard than what you see when you see a certified organic sticker on something. Sometimes you'll look at that even in a grocery store, which has become one of the big rubs, and you don't really know what it is. You may say, oh, and then you find it, you see a little sticker that says it's been produced in, and that could be wherever, it could be a foreign offshore deal, and it might be organic there, but may not be to the standard we have here. So we, we want our beans to be grown to a higher standard than organic, and that's what Great. Uh, Chris says the coupon code did not work. Is it case sensitive? Because I just tried it too and it didn't work for me. If, if they're having any issue with that whatsoever on there, just have them send me an email and I'll make sure that they get their discount. Thank you. Or they can put it in the notes section of their order that says that they are an, a, a Chef AJ listener. And we'll make sure that they get there. Yeah, because there's a lot of people that are saying it didn't work. And I actually just tried it myself. And I tried it all caps. And I tried it not caps. Well, so. I asked the, the fellow that helps us. I'm going to walk toward you because I need to take something down on the screen. Um, the fellow that helps us with such things, I asked him to do it. And he said he would get right to it. But I don't know that he was able to. So that's the best thing. Is whenever, you know, we're, we're not like Kellogg's. If you... If you if something like that doesn't work, and we're going to make it right, and we're going to we're going to have you contact us directly. Thank you. That's the best way to sure. Thank you, Steve. Diane says, "What sizes can you get the beans in?" What's what? What sizes? Oh, thank you so much for that question. We pack in one pound, two pound, five pound packs in this type of bag. The five pound is not just for home use. A lot of our commercial users like prefer that as well. Because in beans, you know, and commercially they used to be in bags, in big bags, and they always they fell over like these do for home cooking. Um, and then we pack in 25 pound cartons in a liner where we ship commercially, and some homes will buy that many beans. That's what they want. So yeah, I don't pack 50 pounders anymore. And the reason I don't is because I'm too old and I'm not, I, it's just not good for you to lug that kind of weight around. I'd rather ship 225s at 150. That way, just about anybody can handle that weight. So we've got one pound, two pound, five pound, and 25 pound packs. We do have some customers that want their beans in totes. Those are 2,400 pound pallet bags. And if any, anybody of your listeners need that, 
have them calm. Great, thanks. And are the beans sprayed with anything? No, 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 water. Nice. And yeah. what is the yeah. best? What is the best chili recipe? The best, I think ours. <laughs> uh, I I really love what we've done with so good. We developed um, so good as a healthy veggie chili or vegan chili. And at where I, I have on occasion uh, gone somewhere where I'm doing a demo or I'm doing an event, and they've said just bring that, don't bring meat chili, and I'm fine with that. We do, and there will always be meat guys there, especially you get up some areas. So I always know I'm going to have that question come up, but I just ask them to try it, and I've never had anyone say, "Oh, I don't care for that," you know, "I don't like it." There's something about the purity of the 11 vegetables uh, and the four heirloom beans that it that is not, we're not trying to do it as a substitute for meat. We just like it. Now, I grew up in those restaurants on ranch hand chili, which is what my mother and dad made. And it's made with things I can't even say on your show. It's wonderful. It's meaty. It's beautiful. And, and people, people fell in love with it. The reason Chili Smith is here is because 30 years after my folks stopped making it, people were still asking me for it. That's, that's why we're here. So when I say I love everybody, I do. And I love that bean. But my, if you were to ask this crowd, your crowd, let's step up. Healthy veggie. So good, healthy veggie chili is wonderful. And Food Network, if you search for it, we'll, we made it uh, for them. And they really liked it. Nice. And which, which email do you want them to send an email to if they can't get the coupon code to work? Steve at chilysmith.com. Thank you. And Thank you. how many different varieties in beans of total do you have? 26 at the moment. How many now, different? There's a lot more than 26 products, but there's 26 beans. 26 beans, nine lentils, barley, farro. Wow. That, how many different types of beans in the world are there? Oh, thousands and thousands and thousands. Now we didn't cover that. You know, I mean, one of the things that makes beans so remarkable is that I always say beans are in our DNA. They're in every culture, just about. They're grown on every continent with the exception of Antarctica. And then, you know, I mean, they, they, beans have been grown since we early on in our human experience. And what I love about it is that sometimes I'll have, particularly with Christmas climate, I'll have parents that will come in when we're doing tastings or something and they're having the beans and they're just loving the beans and they'll have a baby in a stroller or a youngster in a stroller. I'll say, well, be hard if I offered them a bean. They're going, oh, you won't eat it because it's blah, blah, blah. I'll say, okay, do you mind if I try it? So we'll offer them a bean. They'll take it, and they'll take a bite and reach for another. Now, I think that everything is energy, and, and I really believe that that bean, the, the beauty of that or bean is speaking to our DNA saying, hey, you're an old friend. We're old friends. But our beans... We brought them with us. We couldn't have settled this country. We couldn't have come to America without beans. We couldn't have gone anywhere without beans. Every, we, we brought them with us. So we had something to eat in route and plant when we got here. That's what we did. Beans are as much a part of our, our human experience as anything else. And they're one of the products like air, love, laughter, song, you know, those basic things. Beans is one of those things that just everybody loves beans. Beans are for everybody. They're good for everybody. Yeah. Tell that to Dr. Gundry. <laughs> yeah, I, I agree with you, though. I was just joking. The question, if no. there is, is there a secret ingredient to making baked beans? Oh, yeah, there is. Uh, and and I, I'm going to defer that. Uh, send me an email and I will send you the recipe that we use. Uh, and we'll be featuring a segment on um, uh, shortly, actually, on uh, whiskey baked beans. I, I do a, a, mine was Jack Daniels baked beans, and we served it and sold it for years. 
And, and to get it so good, our, my secret is a little different than Twyla's. Mine is to start it early. Um, I, you know, I do water bath those beans. And then I also put them in a cast iron that's oval, an old oval that's 100 and some years old. And I put it in an oven and let it bake slowly for overnight. And it's, it's pretty precious. It's pretty good. So if you email me and remind me that you're interested in that, we'll make sure that you have the link for uh, the recipes. We'll send them to you. And we'll also make sure that you know when we are doing our uh, YouTube channel segment on that. Do you sell any bean pastas? Yeah. Yeah, we, uh, pasta is made with our loop and bean flour. And there's a, one of our uh, commercial accounts that makes it regularly. Yeah, they're in the North Bay area. Nice. Yeah, I know those are very popular now. Yeah, very much so. Very yeah. much so. Well, yeah, and we're and we are. We're all becoming better about that. You know, I mean, and Twyla and I have been cooking together for I don't know five years, uh, and I've always admired her, but I, I've just come to appreciate how how smart it is to eat the way that she's been describing. You know, I, I'm proud of what I'm able to cook too, but then look at me and you, you know, you look at you or you look at, you know, it's, it's different. And so I'm learning as I age that I, I need to pay attention to some of the things that I'm teaching other people as well. Yeah, well, thank you so much for making such fun, you know, products with unique combinations of flavor that are so easy because pretty much everybody that follows me has an eye pop by now or is considering one. And that is just making it so easy to get healthy meals on the table. Oh, Jerry says you're a wonderful human being. <laughs> oh, sweet. I love that. We yeah. use that a lot around here. That's great. Um, yeah. And you know that eye pop, um, we, we did a class uh, just prior to the pandemic. The last two classes we did were, you know, December and, and people had, had asked us to do a, a class on instant pots because they'd gotten one and it sat in the closet, you know, and so we did. Uh, and, and then in January, a lot of folks had received one as a gift. And so they wanted us to repeat it and we did. Well, that really is what, and people were saying through those two classes, I was putting together, you know, like Hop and John for New Year's Day and cooking it and showing people. And that's really... It was our customers that said, just give us a product that has everything in it that we can just drop in there and make it easy. And I'm the guy that was going, oh, no, no, no. You know, you need to learn this and this. They're going like, and boy, were they right. I mean, we all love to know all of the ingredients that need to go in, but doing it's another thing, right? So that's really what we do. And the instant pot classes that we still offer are really popular because people want to learn how to feel safe and confident around an instant pot. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you so much, Diane. The uh, it's, Everything's posted in the show notes, the discount code and Steve's email in case the discount code doesn't work. So you'll just look right okay. below the video. Right. That seems yeah. loud, like a common theme that we've screwed up on. So well, yeah, it, it happens. And we know you're a small business and, you know, it's it's fine. I mean, they can be patient, I think. Well, again, if there's any trouble that anybody is having with any of that, the best way to reach me is they, you have our 800 number. You're welcome to call me. People do all of the time. And I'll answer is 800-434-2929. That rings to my cell phone when I'm out and about or email me. That's probably the best way is steve at chilysmith.com. If it's a question about plant-based or whole foods or any of those things, I will defer it to Twyla so we give you the best information. But if there's any questions about any of the mechanics or any of the beans or any of those things, I'm happy to help at any time. That is so great. Well, thank you so much, Steve. It was so, so fun getting to know a little bit more about beans. Thank you so much. Well, we look forward. I, it, it's always when I have to do these so quickly, it's always a deal because we can all be together and having a, having a bite at the same time here. But we'll do this again sometime. Yeah, may, the one you made, it might be ready by now. Probably. Well, I haven't plugged it in. I just did it. Oh, if you didn't plug it in, then that's... I had the other one and I was trying to be time aware. Oh, you know? uh, yeah. Well, that's... You're, you're a professional at this and I'm not, obviously. So. Uh, but number one rule, plug it in. 
Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah. Thanks so much, Steve. This was a lot of fun. And thanks all of you for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. Please come back tomorrow at 11 a.m. Pacific time when my guest is Linda Tyler. She is going to be making a delicious whole food, plant-based, oil-free Valentine's Day dinner, including a stuffed bell pepper ring and a peanut butter chocolate brownie. Thanks again, 